Good evening. I'm Pastor Michael Cook from Trinity Lutheran Church in Ashland, Ohio. I'm here to lead us on the uh, litany from the Lutheran Book of Worship, the Green Hymn Book. It begins on page 168, 168, the litany. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. O Christ hear us, in mercy hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the cunning assaults of the devil, from an unprepared and evil death, from war, bloodshed, and violence, from corrupt and unjust government, from sedition and treason, good Lord, deliver us. From epidemic, drought, and famine, from fire and flood, earthquake, lightning, and storm, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your incarnation, by your holy birth, help us, good Lord. By your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and suffering, by your death and burial, help us, good Lord. By your resurrection and ascension, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, help us, good Lord. In all time of tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, save us, good Lord. Though unworthy, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To rule and govern your holy Catholic Church, to guide all servants of your church in the love of your word, in holiness of life, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to those who would believe, and to bring into the way of truth all who have gone astray, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful workers into your harvest, to accompany your word with your spirit and power, to raise up those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the faint-hearted and the distressed, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all nations justice and peace, to preserve our country from discord and strife, to direct, guard, and, and all those in civil authority, to bless and guide all our people. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To behold and help all who are in danger, need, or tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to preserve and provide for all women and childbirth, to watch over children and to guide the young, to heal the sick and to strengthen their families and friends, to bring reconciliation to families in discord, to provide for the unemployed and for all in need, to be merciful to all who are imprisoned, to support, comfort, and guide all orphans, widowers, and widows, and to have mercy on all your people. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to reconcile us to them. To help us to use wisely the fruits and treasures of the earth, the sea, and the air, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Give us peace. Amen. O Christ, hear us. 
in mercy hear us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Yesterday, the, the pastors of the Northeastern Ohio Mission District met at Trinity for their quarterly gathering. In our sharing time, two reports caught my attention. One pastor reported that his congregation ha had taken in three new members, even while they were worshiping weekly in their parking lot. Yeah, parking lot. A second pastor reported that uh, he had three new families attending for quite a few weeks, even though they are temporarily worshiping in a barn. <laughs> yes, a parking lot and a barn. Wow. You know, God's Holy Spirit does work where you and I can see no return, no future, and, and where we're just not at all so much quite at ease with, with our present worship life. You know, the Holy Spirit is not constrained by our small vision, nor our anxieties. Could COVID-19 cause a religious revival? Well, while, while my relating of these two incidents does not make a religious revival that will turn the tide of secularism. But I think all of us can say that without a doubt, uh, the coronavirus epidemic uh, has unsettled, just stirred up our country as a whole. You know, our regular Church habits, our usual spiritualities, well, have they have come to a sudden stop? COVID-19 has taken away people's security. Uh, before March 15th, you know, things at churches were proceeding pretty normally, and our perceived need for God uh, what was, I think, often low, you know, we were doing just fine. Our flesh was relaxed and we were oblivious to our sinful condition and the need for Christ. But now, weekends at Lake Erie or perhaps a soccer tournament have ended. Our usual socializing is perceived of as dangerous and and now we are facing death. Yeah, we might die. And our best scientists seem to have a few, but very few answers. You know, just our breathing, just our breathing uh, could be the cause. We could be the cause. We could be the cause and the carrier of something dangerous and deadly. You know, that's a heavy responsibility on our shoulders. And no wonder some people are reconsidering their secularism. Yeah. What they need, of course, is not just generic hope and encouragement, but they need Jesus Christ. They need the law and the gospel. Yes, churches across the U.S. are are reporting that uh, higher numbers of people are watching uh, their worship services uh, in, in live stream. Yeah, this, these numbers are a bit higher, exceeding previous numbers. And Pastor Kevin reported to our group that, uh, well, Trinity members he had talked with are not just watching our live stream, but they're watching other churches as well. Yeah, people are hungry for something then, hungry for something. Economic problems cause uh, uh, family problems. You know, there's really no complacency in our culture right now. Oh, no, 
Everyone's pretty much tuned in, I think. People are in need of compassion, practical help, and the good news of the gospel. Now, whether the epidemic will create a widespread uh, reaction against secularism, oh, that remains to be seen. But Christians should be on the lookout for individuals who are shaken, shaken out of their carnal security and may be ripe for evangelism. The Holy Spirit is active, very active in filling the hearts of people. Yes, we may not see it, but God is at work. God is in charge of the creation, and the Good Shepherd is guarding us. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and be looking out for that spirit.